morning, afternoon or evening. Let's take a few minutes to figure out cesarean scar pregnancy. There is a wonderful RCOG guideline to help us. Question number one then, what is cesarean scar pregnancy? Cesarean scar pregnancy involves implantation into the myometrial defect at the site of cesarean scar. So that's here. You need to be able to diagnose it and manage it. So question number two, how do you diagnose a cesarean scar pregnancy? Ultrasound is your friend for diagnosis. You need to be able to avoid three misdiagnoses. First is confusing a cesarean scar pregnancy with a low intrauterine pregnancy, a pregnancy here. The second is confusing it with a cervical ectopic pregnancy here. And the third is confusing it with a miscarriage sac that happens to be passing through the cervix. Question number three, what ultrasound features do you look for to diagnose a cesarean scar pregnancy? The RCOG guideline tells you to look for five ultrasound features. The first is an empty uterine cavity. The second is a gestational sac or solid trophoblast mass implanted at the site of the previous scar here. The third, and this is really very important, is that there should be a thin or absent layer of myometrium between the gestational sac and the bladder. So that's just here. You can see that's quite thin there. The fourth feature is prominent placental circulation on Doppler examination around here. And the fifth and final ultrasound feature is an empty endocervical canal. Question number four. What are the two types of cesarean scar pregnancy and what is the prognosis with each type? The first type progresses into the uterine cavity as the sac grows. So it progresses into the uterine cavity like that. This can reach a viable gestational age and even live birth, but the risks are morbidly adherent placenta, massive hemorrhage and hysterectomy. The second type goes the other way towards the bladder. So it goes that way. The risks here are uterine rupture and massive hemorrhage. Let me tell you this, diagnosis is tricky. It is smart to refer to a regional center to confirm the diagnosis. Question number five, diagnosis confirmed, how do you manage? Well, if it is a tiny, non-viable cesarean scar pregnancy, expectant management may be an option. But for most cases, medical or surgical treatment will be necessary. There has been much debate on the merits of medical versus surgical management. It is fair to say that surgical management is now gaining the upper hand. Question number six, how do you deliver medical treatment for cesarean scar pregnancy? Medical treatment involves systemic methotrexate or local injection of methotrexate into the gestational sac under ultrasound guidance. The trouble is that the placenta remains in situ and when that disintegrates, there can be massive hemorrhage, often at an unpredictable time. Question number seven, how do you provide surgical treatment for cesarean scar pregnancy? Surgical treatment can be of one of two types. In the first, the pregnancy tissue is removed using suction or hysteroscopic resection. So that's through the vagina. In the second approach, the pregnancy tissues are removed via laparoscopic or open abdominal approach and the scar is repaired. The scar defect is repaired. At the time of surgery, it is good practice to employ techniques to reduce bleeding, including Foley catheter, tamponade, cervical circlage, or indeed uterine artery embolization. Question number eight, how do you manage women who decline termination of cesarean scar pregnancy? Such women should be counseled about the risks of morbidly adherent placenta, massive hemorrhage, hysterectomy, and even death. A care plan should be put in place. So that is Caesarean Scar Pregnancy. I hope you found it useful. See you in Birmingham for the weekend course. Mm -hmm.